I'm good with the cards. I could have been a lover breaking others' hearts. And I'd feel so silly bending on the dice. And a lover seldom see the same girl twice. And that is why. That is why. Oh, that's why I chose. I chose a single blue. Yes, I did. I could have been a doctor. This is Clint from the Man Cave Cigar Lounge. And today my guest is Hernando Caicedo. Yep. Did I get it right? You did. Awesome. Will Caldwell Cigar Company. Yes, sir. Now, Caldwell Cigar Company is a uh, fairly new company. What, about two years? Uh, we've been selling about a year and a half. Year Started and a half. selling May of 2014. Awesome. Um, we actually, this is, this is going to be kind of a little different thing. Um, than normal because we presently don't have Caldwell cigars in the house. That's we've awesome. set up what we needed to do to do it, but with the uh, humidor expansion and everything that we've got going, I just don't have room in the humidor, but two weeks from now... Yeah, but I know I'm going to be the first guy in when you open the new humidor. When we opened the humidor, you were the first And one. you guys are putting a giant monster order in. Uh, absolutely. I mean, that new humidor is just going to be gonna be the Caldwell humidor. We could do... That would be awesome. That, that'd be hey, cool. if y'all want to sponsor that... And then you just all, <laughs> all Caldwell stuff. <laughs> Every every cigar, <laughs> every Vitola, and four boxes of each. <laughs> but I uh, really appreciate you coming out today. Um, yeah. I'd like to talk to everybody a little bit about Caldwell Cigar, some of the uh, some of the uh, wonderful lines that y'all have. You know, it, I know when I first smoked it, the first one I got was uh, Long Live the King, the Lancer. I'm not exactly sure what the name. It's got a weird it's name. Called, it's called My Style is Jalapeno. Right. <laughs> By the way, they're great cigars, and if you don't like them, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> No, the, the, we, you know, I'm glad you liked that Lancero because that's really my favorite. That's one of, or at least one of the favorites, or the favorite of that particular flavor blend, which is Along with the King. And the reason it's called My Style is Jalapenos, we try to be very creative and different with the way we name our cigars. Uh, you know, all, you'll notice that all of them in the Caldwell Collection have a name. Our Torpedo in The King is Dead is called The Last Payday. And then there's some that we make fun of the industry a little bit. You know, we have fun with the guys in the industry. Because there's uh, some cigars out there that have sizes that don't exist, like Double Corona, Gorda, what is that, right. you know? Yeah. So our Toro is a petite double wide short Churchill, <laughs> which is essentially a Toro. So <laughs> it's just us having fun. Petite double wide short yeah. Churchill. That's, that's, that's our Long of the King, uh, Toro. Awesome. But uh, all the names are something interesting, you know? And when we have, the new, when we have a, new, uh, a new size for King is Dead, that's the Lonsdale, and we call it Diamond Girl. Why do we call it Time and Go? Because we're from Miami and we fucking like that song. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I love it. So I know um, today we're both smoking a Blind Man's Bluff. You're smoking a Connecticut. I don't know how much you can uh, talk about. This may or may not be a Blind Man's Bluff, and this may or may not be a Connecticut. No, it is a Connecticut, you can tell. Um, yeah, it's something that we're working on, and uh, you know, we're, always, we're always kind of thinking up new things, uh, new additions to the lines, how to improve some of the cigars or, or add to them and so this is this is something that we're working on. I have a bunch of sticks that are carrying around with me that I'm trying new things. Robbie Robbie's the guy that kinda the the, the, the mad magician mad scientist that comes up with some of these blends and then he just gives me a bunch of like, try all this shit, tell me how it tastes. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> so uh, have you ever gone to him and said, Rob, this sucks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then he says, No, you're wrong, you know. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, the um, question I, I'm curious of is uh, one of the things I love about the cigars, not just the taste, because they are great cigars, but I love the art that y'all put on the bands that are associated with, uh, <coughs> it seems like 20s and 30s and stuff like that, some of the art, the big, uh, or maybe even the 1800s, the big wheel bicycle, which is part of y'all's thing. And it just, you know, what, when I first got into this, Robbie's been in the business for a while. You know, with uh, with a couple other guys, who, you know, went went with Cigar Factory, and then he had his uh, doing private labels and his hotel thing. So when I got involved, I knew nothing about the cigar business, and for me, it was a very daunting thing to walk into some of these humidors and see the sea of cigars. And what we wanted to do was be very different than everybody was else else that was out there. We didn't want to kind of go with the common themes. And there's some great there's some great stuff out there, but we wanted to be very you know different. We wanted to be our own our own selves, our own image, our own whatever we came up with. And Robbie uh, is a very creative individual and he's got this, this you know, mind that just works in such a creative way that he creates some really cool concepts. I mean, you touched on it when you talked about this Land of Snakes thing. Yeah. 
so he comes he comes up with some cool stuff, and uh, you know I'm, he's been a, he's been a good friend of mine for a long time, but we're lucky to be working together. The artwork that we did for the Caldwell collection, so like Eastern Standard, Long the King, even the Blind Man's Luck, you know Robbie had been working. He, he always wanted to involve the art concept into cigars. You know he's a guy that loves art, he's very passionate about art, and he loves all the you know all the mural artists and all the things that they're doing and he supports a lot of them you know as far as you know he's really he, he's a big fan of their stuff and he represents some of these artists and um the guy that made started doing our art is a guy named elio and his tagline is Boca one and he's become one of the top mural artists in the world and and we started working with him in creating like the logo for eastern standard and long with the king and uh, and, and he put a bunch of concepts together, and we kind of gave Robbie gave him an idea. This is what I'm kind of looking for. And he put it together on a canvas, and painted it, and we came up with the artwork. Oh wow! So it's it's yeah, that's a, that's a short story of it, you know. I'm sure it's a little more in depth. Then. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, essentially that's we have artists that support uh, and that, that paint our stuff, and we support them. You know, we did uh, we we did a, an event with them, a charity event called Artisano during the last Art Basel yeah. in Miami. And you know we give a lot of support to these guys, and it's it's really it's really great collaboration with them. Well, I, I, earlier on you said that uh, you know when you came into this business you weren't in cigars. No. What were you doing before, and what brought you in to, to partnering with Robbie on Caldwell? Robbie brought me in. <laughs> no, uh, the um. He was wrong. No, he was wrong. <laughs> he was wrong. <laughs> no, uh, he, he. I was. I, I had a bunch of different. Things. I had a call center in South America, and. Uh, with the call center, I had a drug response company, so we sell products on TV, mainly in Latin American markets, and uh, I was working a lot in that. And that's uh, I, had, I had sold out the uh, the call center, and I was looking for something else to get involved in. And at the time, uh, I was looking at a couple of different opportunities, and Robbie and and Christian, you know, they were uh, they, they they were they were very good friends, and they had Winwood cigars and sometimes some partnerships don't you know pan out the way you want them to pan out for no other reason than you know they're they're both you know <laughs> interesting people to deal with uh, and, 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 and Christian's a great guy and uh, and Robbie and him just you know decided you know they, they they saw things differently and Robbie wanted to do something else and I came into the picture and I said, Robbie, you know, we've been friends for a long time. Let's let's do something together. Let's have let's have some fun with this, and uh, just do whatever you know. Just, just have fun with this. And so it it seemed like a, it, it always sounded like an interesting business to me. You know, it was made good business sense as far as if you did it right and grew the business in an intelligent way. You know, it was it was something that it was appealing to me. But then you know, Robbie's passion, you know, really. I wasn't I wasn't a huge cigar guy before, and Robbie's passion really rubbed off on me, and and really just being around him and being around him in this business is is really it's, it's kind of inspiring and I admire the guy a lot for what he's done, and for his for his knowledge that he's acquired over the years in this business and for his, his I guess his vision in this business, and so I support that 100 percent and that's why I got involved. Well, I will say he's definitely made a name for himself in the business uh, just over the last year. Anyone who smokes cigars has heard of Caldwell Cigars. You know, uh, I guess it was not too long after they came out, and um, I smoked one of the uh, Long Live the Kings. The, the first one I ever smoked was that one that we were talking about. And I, somebody gave it to me, and I was like, wow, thank you. What is this? It's got a weird-looking dude with a crown on it. <laughs> and I just put it in my humidor, and, you know, I didn't smoke it for a couple of weeks. And then I was going out on the patio, and, okay, I have no idea what this is. And I smoked it, and I was like... Oh my gosh, this is amazing. So I called my buddy Lane, he's actually from New York, and said, well, what is this cigar? I've never even heard of it before. And none of the shops locally around here had He's like, I picked it up somewhere in New York or something, and I was like, yeah, this is phenomenal. It wasn't too long after that that they became a regular thing at Stogie's and Smoke Ring and some of the other right. shops around here. And it was like, this is absolutely amazing. I want these in the shop. We need these here. And well, no, man. well, the problem was humidor <laughs> size, you know, and that, and that was the key is... is our humidor, it's smaller than most. You know, we, we pride ourselves on our lounge, and, and humidor, is, we can only put so much in there. And so now that we're expanding, of course, call will definitely be a, an added instance. So I have a question that one of the things that I was looking up 
is y'all have the, the main core line. I, I, core line is probably the wrong word, but y'all have the, the the main lines that y'all have. But then y'all have what's called the JV collection. But it was no longer called the JV collection. It's not. No, it's not called Iberian Express. Okay. So essentially, we had the Caldwell Caldwell cigars. Right. And the Caldwell collection, really, and that's Eastern Standard, The King Is Dead, and Long Live the King, and those were our primary line. Kind of our pride and joy, the you know the showcase of what we wanted to do with brands, right. and and that was we focused on. That's a very protected cigar. We don't put it in, you know, we don't put it in catalogs or online. It's it's a brick and mortar only cigar. But we needed to have a cigar as well that was a good cigar, but that we wanted it to be a mover. You know, we wanted mm-hmm. to put it in as many places and really get it out there, and it and be a good price point. And JV was that cigar. It was a Selección Junior Varsity. A lot of people thought, oh, Junior Varsity, it's a less good Caldwell or whatever. Um, it, it was a, the price point was really low. You know, it came in 10 pound boxes. In fact, the boxes were really cool, but they weren't, you know, Caldwell level. And what we did was we kind of reimagined the entire line. We we they were all grade A tobacco before, and they're still all grade A tobacco long fill. But we improved the blends on them a, little, uh, a lot more, and we uh, we improved the the look. For the cigar, as far as the boxes, the the labels that go on the cigars is much higher quality paper. You know, a lot more attention to detail. Now there's a secondary band on it, and on the back of that secondary band is got the Caldwell bicycle. Because before people had no idea that it was, a, mo- a lot of people had no idea that the, that that stuff was also Caldwell stuff. So now they all have that that label on, it. and so they can kind of put it there. But it's a it's a it's a cigar that's priced. Six dollars and thirty cents to eight dollars for the Cuban <coughs> gauge. There's three. Uh, there's there's three blends. There's a Sevillana, Gibraltar, and Murcias, and it's a Connecticut dark Haba- uh, uh, Dominican Habano, and then an Arapiraca Maduro or Murcias. But the reason we gave them the Spanish names and it's kind of I'll give you a brief story is a bit of a um, note to the history of cigars and where they came from. So. The first country to really cultivate tobacco as a crop wasn't Cuba, it was the DR. Cuba had more important things to do with different crops than tobacco, and so the Spaniards would bring the tobacco back to Spain, and it would go through Gibraltar, which is the, the, the rock of Gibraltar right. going into the Med, and then would get off at Murcias, which is the port in Spain, go up the river to Sevilla, where the world's first cigar factory was. Cigars where we know them came from Spain. And we wanted to give kind of the history of that. So that was why they were called Sevillana, Murcia, Gibraltar. And the, the, the big cigar factory in Sevilla is still there as a tourist attraction to go check it out. I'm long make, make cigars there, but, but it's still there. It's still something we're checking out. That's, that was that idea with that brand. That's amazing. I love history on cigars and stuff like that. There's a lot of the companies, a lot of companies have history, but they don't, they don't put it out there. You would have no way of of knowing the average person doesn't know yeah. you know, why the <coughs> so well, we don't have any like history ourselves. It's not you know, we don't have a grandfather or an uncle or a great grandfather right. that has been in this it's just a bunch of guys that like cigars. You know, Robbie's a guy that just loves cigars and we wanted to have fun with it and that's we don't take ourselves very seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell by the when you get the box of Eastern Standard there's a little story in there and it makes no sense at all. And that was done on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> you know about the history of where we came from because uh, Hans Christensen was our you know relative that came over and he was a dirt farmer <laughs> <laughs> dirt farmer <laughs> so it makes no sense but it's a very it's a very fun story and it, it talks a lot about us we, we're serious guys want to do a serious business but we also don't take ourselves seriously we like to have fun with it that, and that's that's I tell you what, it's one of the reasons I got into this business is she can have a lot of fun. Oh yeah. You know, working at a cigar lounge, she, it's a rough life. I have to smoke cigars and drink scotch all day. It's, it's terrible. It's a rough terrible. life. Terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. You need to retire and go work in an office and sit in the cubicle. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I've retired from real work. Now I do this. <laughs> awesome. Well, Hernando, I really appreciate you coming out, talking uh, about Caldwell and uh, giving us. Uh, information that we might not have had before and yeah well we will have Caldwell cigars in the store within a month I promise y'all yes just right you guys better get on that because this guy Jesus. the more the more phone calls we get more phone faster, calls the faster chance that I can get it well shop. one thing that you haven't seen is something called the last star which is our limited edition I have seen it okay in pictures only <laughs> yeah, yeah well we're coming out with another release it comes out in November to be a Churchill size that's a phenomenal cigar 
is that going to be? How how limited is that thing going to be? Fifteen hundred boxes that we're making. <coughs> so only a few. You know, some stores will get it. We have a few that we're giving to a couple of stores that that uh, we think are the right stores for it to be in. Guess I need to get on that bandwagon. Beg and plead. To yeah, get you to might need to get, get on your knees. <laughs> it's a rough job, but what have we got to do to get the cigars? <laughs> yeah, well, we, we, and we got some really cool stuff coming out in the next year. Cool. And uh, cool for the next trade show, we're already working on things, so it's fun. And part of it has been fun meeting guys like you and the customers at the store. It's a, it's a lot of fun. We meet people from all walks of life and that all kind of share the common interest. So for me, that's been something that's been interesting. I didn't, I didn't get to go to IPCPR this year simply for the fact that we were short-staffed mm-hmm. here and there was a bunch of stuff going on. and. We, we couldn't just shut the shop down for two or three days, you know, to go to the show. So a couple of other guys went, unfortunately, I didn't get to. But uh, I look forward to seeing y'all in Vegas next year. I will right. be there. Uh, I'm Definitely. High water, so. We'll have some drinks and continue the cigar smoking, scotch drinking. Absolutely. I expect, <laughs> to, I expect to be at the after party. There you go. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, again, I want to thank Fernando from Caldwell Cigars. I'm Clint. This is the Man Cave Cigar Lounge, and we'll see y'all next time. See you guys.